What a great year was 2019. Let's do a review, shall we? Early on, we celebrated with the Atmans as Josh married Sam. Soon after that, we said farewell to Chris and Lorraine as they moved on to the next stage of their own journey. But we didn't have time to grieve because we were suddenly into preparation for the Billy, Gra the Billy Graham, the Franklin Graham crusade that was coming up. Some of us went to the training program so that we could be counsellors for those who came forward when the appeal was made. Some of you, of course, remember 19, what was it? 1959 when Billy Graham came out and here we are 60 years later his son who knows in another 60 years we might be celebrating with Will Graham Billy Graham's grandson because he's also an evangelistic preacher there was of course much preparation that went into us going and of course a, a busload in traditional crusade style went into join this enormous crowd at the Sydney Convention Centre and heard great preaching and then when the appeal was given at the end countless numbers of people streamed forward to receive Christ as their Lord and Saviour. We want to follow that model by seeking to go out into the world, discipling those who come to Christ, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that Jesus has commanded us. That's, after all, it's a great commission, isn't it? He want, that's what he wants us to do. And so integrated into our church are the Bible studies that we do, where we go deeper, our home groups, our growth groups that help us to get a grasp on what God is saying to us, what his word says and what it means. Here is a group that's been doing just that. This is the Peniel Theological Seminary in Myanmar. And he, here are the graduates that uh, received their qualifications early on in the year. Here they're graduating with their proud staff supporting them. We support them with mission prayer. And of course, prayer is integral and we meet every month for the hour of power. We back that up with growth groups, both at home and at church. And many of you come. You're welcome to come and be part of that. It really is a growth group to help us in our Christian journey. And, of course, church lunches. Very popular, uh, very nourishing, and we'll be enjoying that in just a few minutes' time. The church council is at work, and you don't see much of what's happening. That's because it's a great church council. The machinery of making the church happen happens so effectively with this fabulous group of people that if it went wrong, you might notice it. But because it goes so smoothly like clockwork, you hardly even notice that the church council is there. Ladies' lunch has been something that's thrived for years, but come New Year, watch this space because there will be some changes men's group has already undergone those changes what used to be a, a catch-up fellowship group has become a, a study group as we sure we still catch up with one another but it's about studying God's Word together that enriches our souls and then we go out into the world here's the uh, happy outreaches at Easter pre-Easter with Sam uh, who lent us the electricity at the front of his coffee shop so that we could go out into all the world to reach people and then when Easter came we reenacted the Last Supper spared no expense to import a rabbi who led us through the Last Supper as it was in Jesus day and thank you for all the people who worked so hard and made all the things that were just as they were in Jesus day so that uh, we could really get into understanding what was happening for them in their world we rearranged our whole world to make that happen very soon after that uh, we said farewell to Hazel and of course Bill is still grieving that terrible loss of his life partner looking forward to the time when they'll be reunited 
immediately after that was Anzac Day and Resurrection Sunday rolled in together we celebrated them next thing you know we were asked a really serious question and it was would we like to buy the cottage alongside the church and so we wrestled with that what would be the advantages and disadvantages and in the end decided we wouldn't do it not every opportunity is one that we need to embrace but we do need to ask the question what has God got for us and it didn't include at this stage uh, buying the house next door and as it happened the neighbours ended up not wanting to sell because the lady has uh, recovered a good measure of health and is living back there again. We celebrated Mother's Day, all that mothers have done for us, and soon after that we were called on to vote and we were starting to think, how do we put our Christianity into practice, even in the ballot box? We noted that it was 75 years since uh, the D-Day landings and so of course we've lost all the World War One diggers now if D-Day was 75 years ago you can imagine how old the World War Two diggers are becoming this uh, we'll soon have lost uh, the last of them but after that we got very excited by all the work that Phil especially had done but Phil and uh, and Bob as they found a great way of being able to transfer our donations to um, Moses the you know, orphans and the Bible College uh, and it didn't involve getting on a plane carrying a bag of cash and going to the Golden Triangle which is Burma as the the hub of the um, the drugs trade in Southeast Asia so thank you Phil for all the work that you've done to make this really happen and uh, it enables us to support the the orphans uh, m far more effectively and safely for all of us 30th of June came and went what happened to the first half of the year it just flew by that uh, that was when holes started to be dug and steel framework was pushed up uh, in Yangon and the next thing you know there's this fabulous building has been erected to support the orphans and the Bible College and it was uh, opened with much fanfare by the Peniel family and we celebrated w with them and of course there was much feasting to uh, mark the joyful occasion soon after that we got great news about Joseph here he is giving us the thumbs up he's uh, heading off back to school for several part days a week as he recovers his full health and we're certainly celebrating and thanking God for uh, what he's enjoying back at home things were coming to push and shove and things that were Christian values were, were being challenged by the world in very serious ways it, it began in the New South Wales lower house where you can see fr from the the vote that two to one voted in favor of ramping up abortions and we were given only uh, 10 days to uh, rally s some sort of response to that uh, before it went to the upper house to be ratified but we thought enough is enough we can do something and we can speak up for the unborn and the vulnerable that's what part of what we're here for so we put together a petition and you know we, we signed it now I must admit I was a bit skeptical about how effective a petition would be just sent off to politicians as it happened it had an enormous impact and front page news that our, our New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian had bowed to fury and uh, anger and a backtrack and we weren't the only ones suddenly Christians were finding a voice enough was enough and we have a right to be able to speak out and have a Christian voice heard and it was heard and the politicians were rather surprised that Christians were willing to stand soon after we had some sad news 
many of you would remember Stuart and Snejana. And Stuart had been missing, and his remains were found in his beloved national park uh, some years after he had vanished. On a happier note, the uh, Kendrick brothers had produced another film. What a great movie it is, too. It's now available on DVD if you'd like to catch that up, if you missed it at the movies. Uh, we celebrated Father's Day, and right on Father's Day, yeah, we lost uh, Ron Bevis. Uh, we'd been praying for him. That, uh, the Lord had plans and uh, planned for him to be in heaven. Almost immediately after that, the federal parliament, I think, probably started to get a bit worried about what had happened in the New South Wales parliament. And so they put forward a number of religious freedom bills. They weren't exactly the greatest bills ever. And so we had a chance to be able to speak to them. And many of you, many of us, wrote to our politicians uh, about what they were doing. We marked the uh, in passing, the anniversary of the 9-11, that's the September the 11th attacks in New York. And here are two photos. The one on the left is from the day of the attack, and this is the remnant uh, of the building. And today, th that structure, that steel piece of uh, crossbeam and upright, is erected in New York as a memorial. Well, there was a hullabaloo and great objections that here was a Christian symbol set up in a public place. Yeah. But the courts ruled that it was okay to do it and the opposition backed down. And so here we have this cross that was in the place of death uh, celebrating. And you can go there today and you can find that in New York. Forgive me on this. I, this is just something that um, I find a little amusing. Now, could you crack the code on the day? 19, 9, 19, 9, 19. Did you know what it was? Or can you work out what it is now? It's uh, a Thursday in September. The 19th day of the ninth month, 2019, at 9 a.m. or p.m. Yeah, I know it's a little thing, yeah, the little things and small minds, so I was amused. Then what we had was a beauty contest between these two babies. The, the one on the left was a photograph taken more than 50 years ago, and the one on the right was fresh out of the egg. And of course, we all agreed that by far the best looking Yatman baby was the one on the left. Soon after that, uh, we rallied around Samaritan's Purse to be able to put together the Christmas boxes. So thank you for all those who collected boxes and for those who brought material that went into other people's boxes. And I, I think we probably had close on as many boxes as we had people in the church, if not more. And you remember it was something to love, something to wear, something for school, something to play with, something special and something for hygiene. The uh, van came and ours along with goodness knows how many other boxes were loaded and even as we speak they are on their way to the Philippines. And Christians were starting to rally and, and some of you went to the Australian Christian Lobby's Not Ashamed Conference and look at the numbers of people that were there to participate in standing up and saying Christian values are worth standing up for. We of course celebrated Reformation Sunday, much more fun than um, Halloween. And uh, then, of course, we paused on the 11th hour at, on the 11th day of the 11th month to remember the armistice of World War I. And then, next thing you know, we're racing towards Christmas. Um, if the orphans can get out and sing Christmas carols to witness to the public, then surely we can too. It took some preparation and 
many of you rallied uh, and uh, produced these bags of blessings. Thank you, Deirdre, for uh, the program and the contents that made this possible. And here they are, ready to roll. And of course, thank you to Jenny, who has year after year labored single-handedly to produce special gifts for Christmas Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and making these events very special. Yes, indeed, she does deserve a hand. In Bunnings, we've been going several years now. Uh, Brett uh, Rowe was uh, a great supporter and enabled us to launch into our program. Uh, year after year, we've rallied. And then yesterday, this is some of the people who were there to celebrate all over again and to give out bags of blessings and to reach out to people, invite them to know more about Jesus, more about our fabulous church. Not everyone's had a fabulous year though, and some of you have spent time in hospital. Uh, perhaps the one who gave us the biggest scare of all was John. It's glad to see him back on his feet. Many of you have enjoyed holidays. Yeah, it's good to welcome you back. And then we've welcomed new people. You know, Vile has been with us now more than 12 months, and Bianca is our latest uh, regular. And yes, welcome, welcome. It's good to have you know, these young ladies as part of our fellowship. The thing that makes us different, though, we're not just a club that celebrates good things or does good things. We have a connection to the spiritual. This is something that makes us a church and not just a social club. It's where we're connected to what Jesus has done for us and who he is. And we must never forget that he is the reason for the season and for the church. And of course, we get to share the gifts in our tithes. And here's where we change track and I want to move into our budget for the coming year. The Reserve Bank calls this the Consumer Price Index. The rest of us know it as the rate of inflation. And here it is mapped over the last 20 years. 20 years, and I'll show you why the 20 is important in just a sec. When Robert brought down his first budget as treasurer in the year 2001, you can see that the budget that he brought in was $2,100 per week. You can spot that on the, the left-hand side of the, um, of the dotted line. If you pursue that line and add to it that percentage from the inflation uh, graph, you'll find that the very same amount, uh, the very same spending power, 2,100, 20 years ago, is now 3,400. So if we were to have the same budget with the same dollar value spend as Robert first introduced, then our weekly budget should be $3,400. But do you know what Robert's been doing? Oh no, it's a good thing that he's been doing. It's a fabulous thing. It's an amazing thing that he's been doing. He's actually been paring down our budget so that year after year, although the dollar number goes up, we're getting far more bang for our buck. Uh, he's enabled us to be able to do more on what is effectively less. The dollars, you know, I know the dollar is more, but the effect of the dollar, the value of the dollar is far less. Some of you could remember way, way back when there was much crowing by Paul Keating that he was the world's greatest treasurer. Uh, and that was because he'd um, been acknowledged uh, by I don't know whom as uh, the, now let me try and think what the exact term was, the International Finance Minister of the Year in 1984. Now, as it happened, 
Wayne Swan won exactly the same award, the International Finance Minister of the Year uh, in 2011 for the way that he had handled the Australian economy during the global financial crisis. Well, I can tell you, I, I can absolutely assure you that the world's greatest treasurer is Robert Cole. <laughs> yes, yes, he is the world. Not just the greatest treasurer for a year, not even the greatest treasurer for a decade, but for the last 20 years, he has been the world's greatest treasurer. And here is the proof. He's been able to do more with less. If only our politicians could come and have a few words with Robert about how he manages to keep uh, us running in the black. Uh, he's got something that he can teach them. But you know what? He's decided that after a mere 20 years, he's going to pass on the baton to someone else. And that someone is going to be Phil, who's uh, willing to step up to the plate. N now, this is not an easy task because it's not just counting the offerings and putting it in the bank. To be a treasurer involves an enormous range of skills, highly um, significant skills, highly specialized skills. And so Phil has got some very big shoes to step into, uh, but he's willing to be game enough to do that. Now, the, the Church Council has approved this. This is an internal appointment by the Church Council, but we want you to be part of that process. So are you happy about Phil stepping in and becoming treasurer in Robert's place? Show of hands. Think overwhelming. You know, you know, could, uh, or you could say universal uh, endorsement. So thank you. And we will be praying for Phil and the new role that he's uh, taking up in the new year. Now, let's have a look at what's been happening, not over 20 years, but let's zoom in a bit and look at what's happened over the last two years. And you can see that oh, you're familiar with these graphs. I don't need to explain them to you. But you might remember that in the third quarter of last year, we asked for a computer projection of what's been going on with our offerings because they were starting to fall away. And the math said, not only will they fall away, but the fall will continue. Uh, and unless it's altered, uh, we'll be in very serious trouble very soon. So we put that to you, uh, explain what the situation was. And so you can see how the graph suddenly changed. And thank you for engaging with this and being willing to step up and make a, a difference uh, and through you know deliberate giving and so you can see the uh, the graph has moved in a completely new direction but let me show you something that I found really fascinating the maths that gave us the curve back in 2018 is exactly the same maths that give exactly the same curve through 2019, 2020. It's the same graph, exactly the same shape, and it's following exactly the same pattern. So it looks like there's something like you know, 18 months to two years from crisis point to crisis point, but we don't want, we can't live by crisis points. We need to uh, be wise stewards uh, about what we're doing. Now the reason why it's a, a curve instead of a straight line, here it looks like a straight line, but it's on the other graph a curve because every year the difference increases and so you, uh, what looks like a small difference increases and so it curves down from the flat line of the budget above it what you end up with is our expenditure. There is, there is no new spend. We're, we're spending exactly the same amount. You know, okay, we're allowing for inflation to impact us, but there's no additional spending that we're doing. We're following Robert's model of minimal expenditure. And our income is totally dependent on our offerings. We have no other source of income other than what 
what we as a church congregation pull together in our various ways of doing that and inflation impacts on that and keeps on drawing us down so what we need is to before we get to crisis point launch into a whole new curve a whole new form of stewardship a whole new step up so I know that you're extremely generous and I appreciate that but now is the time for us to reevaluate that what we were giving when we began the new curve back towards the end of 2018 our dollar value has changed since then and so now it's time for us to think okay it's not just this dollar that I can keep on giving but I need to reevaluate and it's that dollar plus the inflation value that's been kicked in over the last 18 months so that we're thinking ahead and moving into a whole new way of a whole new pattern of giving that's going to allow us to meet our budget changing tack altogether this is what's coming up in the next 12 months that will be of significant impact for the church council you remember the royal commission into child secu sexual abuse it uncovered some awful awful stuff and the saddest part of all was the church was very much involved as perpetrators of this terrible crime so our denomination has partnered together with some others and has produced a set of documents that the church council is going to be using and the program is called a safe church health check now it begins with this commitment now this is not a commitment by the church council this is a commitment by us as a church and it's the church now it's not the church out there but it's this church life church panania is committed and it must be a commitment to providing places services and programs that promote physical emotional and spiritual health and safety and model the love of christ to all whom we have contact with particularly children young people and vulnerable adults that's how all of this documentation opens and out of that commitment there flows a whole raft of other material there's a, a 13 page policy document that follows that commitment and it includes all of these things and then beyond the the uh, policy document there are 18 other documents that are about procedures that we need to follow and the church council as part of its work is going to be reviewing these every month and there may even be a safe church team so if you have a particular interest or concern uh, about caring for the vulnerable you might want to put up your hand to be part of that safe church team now to give you an idea of how significant this is if someone was to walk in off the street today and say 40 years ago I was abused by someone in this church and I want a million dollars compensation the law is now written that instead of innocent until proven guilty in these cases the church is guilty until proven innocent and so this person who's claiming the terrible things were done whether they're true or not the church is at law guilty unless the church can prove that we it didn't happen the way that this person claims it did and so part of that being vigilant of living out the commitment is the policy and the procedure documents and then working with those documents every month non-stop every month and forever onward to ensure that we are putting in place a, uh, a safe environment safe in every possible way lastly some thank yous thank you thank you thank you thank you to the world's greatest treasurer who for 20 years has guided our church 
uh, in financial responsibility and stewardship. Thank you, not to be outdone, Jeff, thank you for 40 years of faithful leadership within our church leadership. Uh, we really appreciate and value the way that you have cared for us and your wisdom and leadership has kept us on the straight and narrow through that time. Yes, of course, we do right to celebrate them. Thank you to our musicians who labour faithfully week after week again and again to uh, do something that other churches own, could only dream about doing. Thank you for all the people who labour faithfully to bring morning teas, for those who produce gorgeous lunches, for those who go the second mile and bring Myanmar morning tea, for those who stick their heads down toilets to mow the lawns, uh, to patch holes in the roof, and quite frankly, thank you to everybody for everything. This is not just a good church, this is a great church, and it's great because you are making it great. This little flock is just the best church that the world has seen. We are doing church the way that honors God, pleases Him, and blesses us as well as all those around us. Uh, yes, from here you get to see what can be seen from up front, and you'd be surprised just how much you can see from up front. So be careful. And of course, thank you to Jesus. Thank you for who he is. Thank you for what he's done. Because of what he's done and who he is, we are who we are and we are who we are becoming. We are a great church thanks to him. And what are we? We are those who are making followers of Jesus by being followers of Jesus. Let me pray for us. Uh, Lord God, thank you for sending your son for drawing us out of sin and darkness in the world and for integrating us into your church universal thank you for forming us into this little group of faithful people who are such a blessing to us and through whom we bless others thank you for the faithful service of robert over 20 years as treasure thank you for the faithful service of jeff leading us for 40 years thank you for all those who serve faithfully week after week in a hundred different little ways. Thank you for the difference that we are making in our world. Thank you for the difference that we are making in each other's lives. Thank you for the difference that you are making in each of our lives. We bless you and through you bless one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.